Welcome everyone to the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Varga, a humble human on a mission, here to help you both look and feel your best. This is a particularly exciting episode for me to record for you all here. And I warmly invite your questions and comments because, as you know, I really like to record these live and actually get your insights, feedback, and questions as I go through different topics. I just feel that it adds to the conversation, and I've had some great feedback from a number of you that you like this format as opposed to this ultra-polished and professional uh, version. It's like more a little bit real, raw, unedited, live, uncut Uh, No holds barred, essentially, in a way. Uh, That's why I like doing this. In today's show, I'm going to be sharing a really big announcement and also tips for both looking and feeling your best with a slowing aging lifestyle and some of the nuances that come with that when you are elevating your life, you're making shifts, you're making shifts in the right direction. You are here to learn how to become more radiant, how to become more beautiful, how to become more magnetic, and really create the life of your dreams. And I just encourage you to have this emphasis on peace because bringing peace into your life and having even just a slower pace in life is something that I've noticed being a really key, important quality For those who I've served since 2011 with offering rejuvenation and also tips for slowing aging and biohacking and longevity and all that stuff, those who are the most radiant that I work with and serve have a more peaceful and balanced lifestyle. And I really notice this for myself too. So say, for example, we'll use myself as a case study. When I look at pictures and videos of myself, even just three years ago, My face looked puffier. My body composition was was kind of puffy as well. And I was working out. I was eating salads for lunch and dinner and felt like, oh my gosh, the salad's taking me like 30, 45 minutes to eat. And you know, you're hungry 15 minutes later because I wasn't eating enough protein because I hadn't established a more peaceful lifestyle or routine. And I look so much better now in you know my opinion, and I'm actually doing less rejuvenation than ever. So depending on your budget, you might want to do rejuvenation or just with what's feeling right for you, you are interested in doing more of the lifestyle side of things. So today we're going to kind of tiptoe around a few of those topics. I'm going to kind of highlight a few basic things and then a couple of advanced things. And for more deeper insights. Actually, in my tutorials that are running now, typically in my tutorials, I actually do an hour and a half lesson on the biohacking and the lifestyle. And with the tutorial session that I'm doing now, I'm actually doing two of them. One, which is pretty extensive with the free stuff. And then a second one, actually taking you into my biohacking room and showing you some of the more advanced things that you can do with the angle of the, this is what I do for body composition, peace of mind, clarity, having um, better sleep, more balanced hormones and better body composition. That's going to be a second lesson in the tutorials, which is great. And then for more of, I would say the body, mind, spirit, energy things, the communication side of things, the navigating life, really looking at your posture, your gestures, how you're speaking, what you're wearing, how you're styling yourself, that's a little bit more in the membership. So just to kind of delineate what the different things are, this is going to be, you know, my top tips for truly looking and feeling your best with the angle of slowing aging, the free biohacking stuff. But first, let's kick things off with an exciting announcement. And this is very relevant to this conversation of when we're going through shifts, when we are elevating ourselves with how we look, we're doing more health things and things start to happen and you start to get that positive momentum forward and you start to observe that good things are coming into your life at a pretty rapid rate and how that can really require actually an adjustment period for your body and mind 
And in the tutorialism membership, I shared a little bit deeper. I don't really get too personal here on the podcast because it's more public, uh, but I will share what I experienced very recently in my life and how I overcame and really supported my body and mind through this adjustment period. Because this happens when you start to make good choices day in and day out, 90 to 99% of the time, you're going to see these shifts with how you feel and how actually opportunities and people interact with you differently and good things really start to happen. But then there's also the discernment piece too. And really being in your body and noticing how these different situations and opportunities when you're up leveling, how you look, how you carry yourself, how you present yourself, how to discern if, oh, all these opportunities are coming into my awareness, which ones are going to be in the highest for you. And also being at peace if something doesn't work out. I like to have this mindset that if, if something doesn't work out, it simply just wasn't meant to be. And with something not working out, that's creating space for something else, possibly even better, more likely even better. So that's a great mindset shift. If you have your hopes on something, it doesn't pan out. You're not getting the results that you're wanting yet. Maybe there's a missing piece. Maybe there's something else to add that at the right time, I truly believe that that's going to enter your awareness and your consciousness when you're ready to receive. So basically looking at the toxic bucket, you know, I like to talk about oxidative stress and inflammation because this is what ages us. At the end of the day, it's inflammation and oxidation is what ages us. And when there's too much oxidation in the body, there's too many environmental stressors in air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, eating the wrong foods, having that exposure to yeast, fungi, parasites, heavy metals, mold, but also people, also circumstances, also situations. Stress is a sign of being alive. You've heard of me talk about that. And again, have that mindset shift that aging is a privilege. You are, I truly believe that we're all here for a reason to make our own positive impact in the world. And we're going to be more able to make that impact with ourselves, with our families, in our workplaces, when we are as pure and clear of a vessel as possible, which also plays into biologically and physiologically how empty is this toxic bucket so that you are more resilient, always being ready, always being resilient to, in my opinion, always be radiant. They truly go hand in hand through my observations. So with the announcement side of things, I've, you know, being back in my hometown here, it was the right move to come back. I also can only live abroad for about six months at a time. And when I came back, just all these beautiful opportunities started to present themselves. And I had to really sit back and discern what is the best move at this time, because it's all about timing with certain things in your life. Just kind of notice that it truly does come down to timing and, you know, great opportunities, both personally, both professionally. And then I as you know, have been in the research and development phase of my skincare for about a year and a half. And I, there was just some resistance. I was noticing some resistance. So that's something I also encourage you to notice is if you're wanting to move forward with something, but there's resistance getting in the way, I want you to notice that because good things I find have a little bit more flow to them. The flow is really the feminine quality. The masculine quality is, okay, let's get this done. Let's knock these tasks out of the park and let's accomplish something and problem solve along the way. So it's good to be in balance with both of those masculine and feminine qualities of ourselves so that we don't lean too much into one extreme and too much into the other, but to really have balance and know when to slow down. So, the skincare products, it's happening sooner rather than later. Really thrilled with the formulations. I have uh, basically a scientist who is also sharing the same values as me for using really clean ingredients and doing something really interesting with the chemical process with water and silver to provide a preservative nature to the active ingredients like actives like carbon C60, hyaluronic acid, different peptides and antioxidants. How can we keep these things stable? This has always been such a passion of mine. How can we keep things 
these agents stable so that they do good things to the skin, they get absorbed into the skin appropriately into the dermis while not needing the use of other chemical preservatives. This has been something on my heart. I've listened to so many of you and what your desires are in a skincare product and the right opportunity presented itself at the right time. And also having that decisive quality uh, action taking quickly when it feels really good is good so that you're not humming and hawing in your mind, just playing things out. Like what if that happens? What if this happens? The what ifs of something in the future is actually a really good way to drain your mental and emotional energy. It's focusing on what are the actions that you can take now. This movement forward with my skincare line, I'm so excited about, and that was just one of the big things over the, the last little while that's really created this huge shift in my life and then physically what happened. And so I'm going to walk you through what to do when these shifts start to happen. Collagen is also happening as well, a grass-fed beef collagen. Really excited. Collagen is so key. You want to be having about 10 to 12 grams of collagen a day. That's what the research shows. That's what I unpacked when I wrote my recent article for a UK journal on nutrition and the skin, essentially two to three liters of water a day, 10 to 12 grams of, col of collagen a day. And also with your protein, I weigh about 130 pounds. I'm five, seven and a half. And so my goal really is to have about 130 grams of protein a day and getting those key nutrients as well. Antioxidants, omegas, things like magnesium, zinc, manganese. So I take a lot of supplements as well and adaptogens. And I know you've heard me talk about Organifi many times on the show. Uh, this episode is not sponsored. It's just really important when you're making these shifts with elevating yourself, both appearance wise and also in your life to have adaptogens, which come from a lot of times mushrooms, not the psychoactive kind, but the adaptogenic kind. They help to support these little glands that sit on top of your kidneys, your adrenals, so that when an obstacle or when something occurs where you have to make decisions, you need to navigate things in your life, they're really going to support your adrenals because your body makes more cortisol and we don't want the body to go through uh, adrenal fatigue with having sustained elevated levels of cortisol, uh, which can lead to downstream nutrient depletion. And in uh, two other articles that I wrote, I noticed this trend of autoimmune diseases actually doubling year over year. There was a doubling in 2019 and then again in 2020, uh, actually in Canada. And what really happens when disease starts to take root is there's typically a nutrient a depletion or an anti-nutrient situation in the body where the body isn't absorbing nutrients. And then when our DNA replicates itself, we all have this unique signature. We have our name, we have our DNA. When these, these processes physiologically in the body are happening, the better your operating systems are running, the better you're going to be able to cruise over that life obstacle. And, you know, we experience obstacles and problem solving situations that are necessary all the time. So the adaptogenic formulas from Organifi, you can find a lot of things that I'm going to reference in today's episode on my biohacking page over at theschoolofradiance.com. And when you're on my newsletter, you're going to be getting first access to when the skincare is ready. I'm so excited to be launching this because for me to put my name on something, it has to be true to my values as clean as possible. Feels great. Not too expensive. You know, the cost is what it is with having really high quality actives and agents. And actually one of the products, get this, you can eat. I kid you not, you can actually put this product on your skin and you can also put it in your mouth and absorb the uh, carbon C60 that way, which is pretty revolutionary and uh, I'm just beyond thrilled. So this is kind of like this creative process. It's sort of essentially giving birth to something. And when we're going through new things in our lives, especially as women, with, with men, it's it's a little bit more in the nature, okay, problem solve, okay, this, problem solve, this, problem solve. But for women, it's just a little bit different because we have hormones, 
the way we respond and go through things is very much related to where we are in our cycle. So that ovulation phase is very much when we can kick butt and take names. And then the other phases, you might just notice the need to slow down a little bit. So I want to encourage you to think about where you are in your cycle, if you're still menstruating, where you are in perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause. Notice how you feel. And depending on how you feel, those days are going to be the days when you can accomplish more. And then there's going to be some days where, okay, I just need a little bit more peace and rest. And I'm mentioning this because I've looked after so many beautiful individuals over the years that wore the busy badge of honor. I'm sure you've heard me mention this. And notice the individuals in your circles who wear this busy badge of honor, keeping up with the Joneses, entertaining at their home a couple of times a month. You know, they got to look after this. They got to look after that for, you know to sort of stay within that social circle and be accepted. And that can also relate to rejuvenation. Some people actually want to have it obvious that they can afford rejuvenation because that's what is the norm in the social circle to look a little bit overdone. So if you're curious why some people actually look overdone, um, that actually might be why. They want to make it a, quite obvious that they can afford to do rejuvenation. But I think the best results with rejuvenation are going to be what looks natural and actually what stems from really looking after the canvas and the masterpiece of you and putting back these pieces together in a mature and evolved way. Uh, other things that are new, there's a new teaching opportunity for me, for other doctors and nurses. So excited about this because teaching is truly my passion, not only to teach you who's curious about the different rejuvenation and longevity options, but also the practitioners and really helping to shape and mold the next generation of clinics and, and practitioners to really best serve what you are needing at this point. So if you are a practitioner, uh, you can learn more over on my practitioners tab at the school of I would love to connect with you because I know a lot of doctors and nurses and uh, practitioners actually listen to the show to integrate things into their practice and kind of keep their finger on what's happening in the industry, which is very exciting. So with all that said, there was also a move in that mix over the last couple of weeks. So needless to say, my system uh, the other day was just like, okay, I need time to integrate in a big way. So I really just want you to be okay with being in tune with yourself and in touch with yourself when you do need that extra time to process, when you do need that extra time, basically for your body, your physical form to catch up to all of the beautiful, positive things that are happening in your life. Because this is something that will happen at some point when you truly are investing your time and energy and money into your appearances and truly just elevating who you are as the beautiful radiant human you are into this next evolution, this next phase of your life. And phases can take on many different forms, finishing school, getting a new job, um, getting in a relationship, strengthening the relationship that you have, having kids, having the kids move out, retiring. There's so many different phases that we go through in our lives. And I believe that all of those phases do require a little extra self-care and a little extra peace during those evolutionary upgrading elevated phases of you. So think about in your life, I'm curious to hear from you who are here live, maybe some of the things that you're going through at this time and why you might be here, why you might be really interested in the desire to both look and feel your best, which is what the School of Radiance podcast is all about, which is why I show up because I'm really passionate about this. And I'm, you know, I'm human too. I'm going through these things with you. So I'm curious to hear what those transitions are in your life. Now let's get into how we can care for ourselves during those times. So the other day I woke up, I had the best dream of my life. You know, the week before that was a lot of movement, a lot of green lights on many different things, at least three 
big things, all good, happy to report. And, you know, I woke up, had a great dream, felt fantastic. I had a rock star sleep. I, of course, slept in my EMF clothing, took my magnesium, had a high protein dinner, didn't eat for a couple hours before bed, had, I literally actually drink about a liter of water before going to sleep. I know that some of you might be thinking, oh goodness, I'd be getting up to go to bed in the middle of the night. But the interesting thing for me, and this is always going to be specific to you, so I think it's key to actually use some type of sleep tracker when you are starting to add things because what a sleep tracker is going to do for you is it's going to allow you to quantify the improvements and the different you know, supplements, meals, lifestyle habits, cold plunging in the AM, sauna use or hot detox bath in the PM, what things are how these things are impacting your sleep, your HRV, your different sleep stages, and also your sleep scores. So there are two types of technology on the market to help you track. And in, it takes the guesswork out of, oh, I think this might be working because my desire for you is to be more conscious with what you're spending your time and your attention on to get the results, to get that positive movement forward and quantifying either with the aura ring and if you do wear an aura ring, I really encourage you to make sure it's always on airplane mode so that you don't have this ring on you that's tracking your HRV, it's tracking your readiness score, it's tracking your sleep, your heart rate, all sorts of really great metrics. I don't want it to be blasting you with the Bluetooth and the wireless cellular radiation and the electric fields that come from wearing a tracker. So the Aura Ring on airplane mode, I think is great for you to get insights into some of your health metrics, essentially. I'm not a fan of the Apple Watch because that's constantly actually on your heart meridian, on your wrist. That's how it's tracking your heart rate. And I just observe those who wear smart watches that they're typically a little bit more anxious and you're constantly getting dinged on your wrist and the, the Apple Watch really doesn't track your metrics as well as the Aura Ring or the 8 Sleep. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So this is just an observation I've seen over the last few years that those who wear the Apple smartwatch, you're constantly getting exposure to electric fields. And I would beg to question that canola oil and vegetable oils, those rancid toxic oils, as well as electric fields truly are the smoking of our generation. Again, that's just my opinion. And the data sets from autoimmune conditions or deaths of unknown cause doubling in 2019 and then doubling again in 2022 is pretty telling that there are some things in our environment, in our food sources, in the way that we're living that are having a negative impact on our lifespan and quality of life and autoimmune diseases spiking, doubling year over year. So this is worthwhile paying attention to. And so my, for myself as a researcher, I love to share these types of like data sets, things that I find when I write research articles on certain topics. And then you can take that information and run with it and integrate what feels good for you or have an awareness and a different perspective. That's what I hear a lot of you say when I ask for feedback on the show is you appreciate my perspective, kind of bring like, the woo and some of the esoteric stuff, but I tie it back to physics and our biology and uh, how things play out on the physiological level with how our body is operating. Look at your body like a machine. You want to be giving your body the best nutrients possible so that it can run optimally and do the maintenance when necessary, when there's a little bit of um, maintenance that's, that's needed or rest and repair and uh, recovery uh, is an analogy of, say, if you take your car to the shop, which is kind of a funny one, uh, because I'm a bit of a petrol head car net. Stop wearing the Apple Watches. Stop wearing the AirPods. If you're listening to this and you have the AirPods in your ears, please, please, please put those away. And it's interesting that these technologies that cost money to, you know, they're called smart technologies, I would say are making us less smart because it's causing our red blood cells to stick together and we're not getting as good blood flow to our brain, organs, and skin. And actually with EMF exposure on the skin, 
there is uh, something that is really interesting that's noticed. There's more skin redness and irritation, as well as with the eyes, more, more irritation. We're actually seeing ocular diseases or eye diseases, like cataracts in 40-year-olds, when typically this is a 80-year-old disease where that cataract, that cataract lens in the eye, it starts to get cloudy and it starts to get hard. And then it gets replaced with a synthetic one. And then you have your vision restored, which is fantastic in your 80s. So we are seeing certain types of diseases that typically impact people when they're much older, impacting people when they're much younger. And uh, I would say that EMFs and blue light are huge, massive contributors to the eye changes that we're seeing in the ophthalmology world. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the eight sleep mattress. This is another tracker. So I love the Aura Ring and I love the Eight Sleep for really monitoring your changes. And when I integrated biohacking a number of years ago, I was tracking what I was doing with both the Aura Ring and the Eight Sleep because the Eight Sleep also gives you a sleep score. It gives you insights as to how many times you toss and turn, how much deep sleep, REM sleep you're getting how many times you're waking up in the middle of the night, and also your HRV, which is your heart rate variability. It's that time between your heartbeats that actually can give insights into how well you are recovering. So I didn't want to test, I didn't want to guess that what I was doing was working. I didn't want to have blind faith, especially with what I share here on the show. I want to know that these made a difference for me and it's likely gonna make a difference for you as well. But you are your own individual and we're all bio-individual. We all have our own sets of DNA and things happening in our lives and exposure to different environmental toxins in air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, food, and pathogens that then have an impact on how we look and feel. It first has an impact on how you feel, so energy-wise, and then it has an impact on how you look. Because what I find is when the body is exposed to something, a couple of weeks later, it's going to show up on the skin through redness, through breakouts, for hyperpigmentation, darkness, redness, puffiness to the eye area. And then after that, then, then the body composition or the puffiness or the puffiness to the face or hair loss can start to happen. So the skin and the way that we look actually is like a mirror into what's going on internally. I highly recommend when you're starting to be on the path of doing a lot more of the technical biohacking things, taking more supplements, doing more cold plunging, saunaing, um, things like that, you do want to be tracking it and making sure that what you are spending your time and money in is actually working for you so that you don't waste time and money doing things that don't make a difference. So the eight sleep, you can either get the full mattress, which is also going to give temperature regulation. So for those of you who are in perimenopause and menopause, and you're experiencing fluctuations with your sleep temperature, and you want it a lot colder, but your partner wants it warmer, the eight sleep mattress, or you can get the eight sleep mattress cover, which is a little bit more affordable that just slips over top of the mattress that you have. You can actually temperature regulate. It will auto do it for your side and your partner's side. So this is gonna help you sleep better with modulating the temperature at which you sleep because sleep is so imperative. If you're looking to both look and feel your best, getting your sleep on point is numero uno. And when you start to purify your air using air purifiers, when you start to purify your water, not drinking tap water anymore, when you start to wear EMF protective clothing or use EMF protective bedding, not wear the smartwatch or the AirPods, maybe turning your router off at night if your home security system isn't connected to that, not using your phone or laptop plugged in so that you have that electric field and current going straight from the outlet to your body. Um, That's going to mess with your blood and eating the right foods. When it comes to eating the right foods, there's a couple of free things that you can do now. Find out what your blood type is and eat in accordance with your blood type. So say for example, I'm blood type O and I do really well with a lot of meat and high protein. But if you're A or 
B or AB, then there is some insights into eating for your blood type that suggest having more greens is actually really good for you. So that's the free stuff starting to eat for your blood type. But I do recommend that you test instead of guess what you eat. And Viome has an incredible test kit that looks at your stool. So it looks at your gut. It looks at what's happening in your gut and how you are metabolizing and breaking down and absorbing nutrients or not absorbing nutrients based on your epigenetics, which is the expression of your DNA, which is your signature essentially. And we want to be giving our body more of what's going to be supportive of happy and healthy DNA replication, as opposed to things that are going to add from a toxin level and add from an inflammation level that can disrupt that, that can disrupt the the expression of your DNA, which is the study of epigenetics. So the stool test from Viome, the gut health intelligence test is, it's just under 200, uh, I think it's around $200. And that's going to give you a snapshot of what foods are actually really good for you to eat now. And you can also get some precision supplements with that made to order based on what your gut specifically needs. And that's a really cost-effective gut test to really take out the guesswork as as to what you should eat, which might be very different than what you have been told to eat. Uh, you know, kale was a superfood, hailed as a superfood a number of years ago, but you have to think about where the marketing comes from. What's happening in the agricultural sector? Is there a surplus of kale all of a sudden because Pizza Hut isn't using kale, which was one of the biggest buyers of kale for many years, to have in their buffet displays? Oh, what are we going to do with this surplus of this agricultural product? Okay, we're going to market it as a superfood. But kale is very well known as being extremely high in oxalates, which creates this like crystal these crystals throughout your body can contribute to things like kidney stones and gallstones and things like that. So we're learning more about oxalates. We're learning more about other elements in our food, things that are disruptive. Like for example, nightshades are typically inflammatory for a lot of people, but of course the vegetable oils like the canola oil is just, you know, terrible because they stay in your body for a really long period of time. Canola oil and, and uh, vegetable oil, were actually really heavily manufactured during wartime. And it was actually for the purpose of a machine oil. And again, there was a surplus. Oh, okay. Well, it has a really high sort of like heat point. We can actually fry food with it. So it's really interesting to consider the history of where recommendations come from and what's driving those recommendations. And to, be, and to be observant of it, but really be able to be a little bit more intelligent with not just jumping on the bandwagon of using this or using that because of marketing and what you're told to do, but actually take a look at what your body needs and the research behind that. Um, also, just the thing, if you are eating olive oil, a lot of oils are actually mixtures of other oils. I'm a huge fan of avocado oil, cooking and frying with avocado oil, ghee and grass-fed butter. I don't use as much olive oil as I used to because of the concern of um, an olive oil actually not being a pure olive oil. So unless you know that that company is not cutting their oil with other lower quality toxic rancid oils, that's something to also be aware of. And really getting that protein up is super key. So when you are doing things to support your sleep with not watching, you know, a big, exciting thriller, action, scary movie before bed, not scrolling social media, not watching the news, reading a book, taking a bath, turning the lights down low, maybe wearing your, your blue light blocking glasses. I have the Viva Rays on my biohacking page. These are really good to set up your circadian rhythm. Other free things I want to encourage you to do is get more sunlight in your eyes. And actually with my eyes, 50% of the population experiences something called dry eye. And I actually started using some methylene blue eye drops. And methylene blue is really interesting because it has a biomodulation, uh, photobiomodulation effect to it. So I actually do these methylene blue eye drops. I just started doing them about two weeks ago. So I need to trial them myself. But what I notice for a while before I specifically recommend the product 
is way less dry eye. I can actually wear my contacts all day, which is a big deal for me, especially in the summer months when it's a little bit more dusty, especially in the spring when there's more pollen. Um, in the wintertime when there's more indoor heating, these can all actually contribute to more dry eye. And these eye drops have been really helpful for me. So I do integrate a lot of the more sophisticated things as well with the frequency, with other technologies, but I really wanted to focus on free things. So getting outside, getting sunlight in your eyes as early as possible when you arise is really key. And then also sun gazing and taking in that beautiful sunset in the evening, maybe when you're having your dinner outside on the patio this time of year and getting your grounding in. So I'm doing lots of work in the garden here and uh, I take every opportunity I can to make contact on the earth and making sure that when I'm standing on grass, it's kind of wet. So I really love to stand on the lawn after I've done some watering and the grounding is a free thing that we kind of can dismiss as being, oh, that's a little too woo, that's a little too granola, but it's actually really helpful at getting those negative ions from the earth into your body and your body offloading those positive ions that you might've accumulated through being on your computer while it's plugged in, using your phone while it's plugged in, being in your home with the electrical fields that are given off through the electrical wiring and appliances in your home. Don't downplay the key importance of actually getting outside and grounding. It's totally free. And what the research shows is you want to do it for about 30 to 45 minutes a day. And ideally having contact where there's some moisture because the electrons are going to be flowing a little bit better. So this is also your excuse to get in the ocean, put your feet in the water, on the sand, take off your slides or your flip-flops and get that grounding in. When you notice that your body is going through big shifts. And again, I warmly encourage you to share in the chat while I'm recording this live, what are some of the shifts that you have been going through? So say, for example, what I mentioned before, I just want to jog your memory, really just allow you to tune in and give yourself a little bit of credit for what you have accomplished and have overcome in your life. But right now, what's going on in your life? What types of transitions are happening with your family life, with your personal life, with your friends, and also in your professional life with your colleagues, with where you are in, uh, you know, menstruation, perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause, for the gentlemen listening, where you're at in your leadership role within your personal and professional aspects. Are you an effective problem solver? Are there some things that you need to do to balance your hormones and get the testosterone up? What are you noticing in the transition in your life right now? Thanks, Carrie here. Going through, re going through recovery from hip replacement surgery, have not been able to eat supplements for seven days before and 30 days after surgery. Yeah, so surgery is something that can happen with shoulder surgeries, knee surgeries, hip surgeries. Thank you so much for mentioning this. And the body, our joints definitely experience some wear and tear. So when you are living a lifestyle that's more conducive to keeping that inflammation lower, you're balancing your strength and conditioning, your cardiovascular, so lifting some weights, maybe running on the beach with the kids or the dog, playing some pickleball, doing something that incorporates the need for sprinting, kicking the soccer ball, and just doing something that gets you outside of just walking because you do need to have those high intensity spurts of movement to get your heart rate elevated. Um, but depending on your age, you also have to be conscious of your joints too. And then of course, stretching your fascia and doing yoga and Pilates, things like Qigong are incredibly grounding for the body. So don't miss out on those three key elements and also the stability and the flexibility and the balancing. Actually, a rebounder in your home is a really good way. Yes, you're gonna to have to purchase a rebounder trampoline, but this is a really great way to just get the fluid and the lymph in your body moving. And for joints, what things like yoga does is it basically helps to lubricate your joints. And those who do yoga regularly, they have much smoother fascia 
and actually, um, if you were to take your hand and kind of go over the skin on your thigh, what happens? Are you getting a lot of dimpling on your skin? Are you seeing cellulite? That's actually a sign that your fascia needs to have a little bit of love. And when we're doing more stretching exercises, like especially with yoga, your fascia is getting stretched. And when you're doing your hot detox bath, which I love to do with borax, Epsom salts, and baking soda, and in the sauna, I take either a gua sha stone or the end of a mason jar lid or um, an oriental soup spoon that are like ceramic for wonton soup kind of thing. And actually just going with pretty, pretty firm pressure over your body and over the areas where you're noticing the dimpling, which for women is primarily in the um, gluteal area or the thigh area, moving that fascia is so key to do with actually this manual manipulation because the movement of the lymph, the stretching of the fascia. So even if you're recovering from surgery, I'm going to share a couple of recovery tips too. And also even before and after surgery, this is worthwhile mentioning because Carrie said she's going through surgery and, you know, this, this happens when the joints start to break down. So if you are knowing that you're having surgery, really leaning into emptying out that toxic bucket is key. And actually in my tutorials, I have a whole lesson dedicated to pre and post rejuvenation recovery, which is actually very similar to having say like a joint surgery. You do want to avoid blood thinning in agents and supplements like aspirin, ibuprofen, St. John's wort, vitamin E and omegas because they can thin the blood and result in more bleeding during procedure. And then also there can be some issues with certain nutrients and minerals and supplements that could interfere with the anesthesia that might be required. So basically going into surgery as your healthiest version as much as possible with as much muscle as you can with a good BMI, making sure you're getting your hydration, enough protein, enough collagen, and you're feeling good going into surgery is actually going to support a faster recovery. And then after your recovery, uh, it says here, Carrie, you're not supposed to take any supplements for 30 days after surgery. Uh, obviously, this is not medical advice. This is educational information only. If you think you have a health condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician and before making any lifestyle modifications. However, for me, I wouldn't wait that long. I would not wait that long for 30 days after surgery. I've had a number of surgeries myself. Um, I've had a little bit of work done over the years. <laughs> and with that, I got really good at actually prepping um, before surgeries and then also afterwards. So really focusing on high nutrient foods after surgery is really great. And also looking at supporting your liver because the general anesthesia, your body processes any toxins or everything through your liver and kidneys. So it's really important to be supporting the liver and kidneys and supporting the detoxification process. And I actually have a protein shake it's called the Access Endo on my skin shop that helps support the liver. And the liver is so important because number one, it's a, it's a detox organ, but number two, it's responsible for hormones. So after surgery, you might notice a little bit of shifts with your mood. This can be from the pharmacokinetic component from actually the, the medications that you were exposed to during surgery with anesthesia, but also some of the pain medications you're on afterwards, they can mess with your mood just a little bit. So you might be feeling a little bit down now. So do things that cheer you up, read a good book. Don't focus on like music or shows that is more low vibe. Just keep it high vibe, keep it really positive, stay in that positive state. And if you notice yourself entering this woe is me, moment, if you're going through something pain-wise, injury-wise, surgery-wise, life-wise, if you're in that feeling of guilt, shame, indecisiveness, those are really low frequencies. You want to channel your inner hippie <laughs> of peace, love, and joy. You literally have to become good at picking yourself out, up out of these negative emotional states um, because 
nobody's going to do it for you. These, this is all the mental stuff. This is the mindset stuff. You really have to become, if you want to be radiant, if you want to be a great partner, if you want to be a great mother, if you want to be a great father, if you want to be a great professional work associate, staying positive is so incredibly key and no one can be your best cheerleader than yourself. So channel your inner hippie when you're having those moments, whether it's that time of the month, you're going through your post recovery surgery stuff with, you know, the drugs in your system that kind of mess with your, your, your brain synapses and some of the different neurological things that are happening. It does come down to mindset and staying positive in those positive emotional states. So incredibly key. So focus on the liver after recovery, drink lots of water, high nutrient foods, making sure that you're moving. Personally, I wouldn't wait 30 days after surgery, but your physician might have told you that for a very specific reason. So I can't speak to you, Carrie, in particular, but for myself, after a couple of days, I was on really, um, really solid supplement routines with making sure that I was having enough zinc, having enough magnesium, having enough iron, having enough manganese, drinking enough water. That's really important so that you don't get constipated after surgery too. Uh, having some fiber in there is really key too. And keeping up with the protein I ate and rather drank tons of protein shakes after surgery because after surgery and, uh, you know, basically after even a point of evolution in your life, rejuvenation, your body's going through this repair and recovery mode, essentially. So you need to feel it. You need to feel it both physically with what you're consuming, but also emotionally, mentally, energetically, and spiritually. And in the membership, I really get into some deeper layers here. And if you've been hearing me mention this stuff, I don't talk about this stuff publicly because it's just like maybe a bit too out there for the the public here on the School of Radiance podcast, but boy, have these made massive differences in both my life and uh, other members in the membership and the clients who I've observed who are the most radiant, what that looks like exactly. Sylvia says, love that fascia being worked on is really needed, especially when we're going through life and we're sort of in this autopilot cruise mode. What can happen is we forget to take care of our bodies. We forget to move. We forget to stretch because we're go, go, go all the time. The busy badge of honor. That is not sustainable. At some point, the body's going to crash. At some point, the mind's going to crash. At some point, the energy's going to be off. At some point, you'll lose your spiritual connection because you're so focused on certain tasks and you're not looking at some of these other elements of yourself that are just as important to keep rock solid and spend time and energy on cultivating and ensuring is really strong, ready, resilient, and radiant. Sylvia, have had vascular surgery, surgery and the heat in Tucson has been really hot, so fluid retention has been a problem. Yeah, the fluid retention stuff that's cardiovascular. So when we're talking about the heart, you know, it's kind of the most charged electrical organ in your body. Uh, we only have one heart, a heart can be broken, our heart can be stressed, all sorts of things, right? Maybe um, spending a little bit more time, like being in this loving, like, okay, think about this from like a TCM support, traditional Chinese medicine support, what's going on? What are the qualities of this organ? The heart is our heart center. It's where our love comes from. When we're looking at the, okay, this is where I'm going to blend like the woo and the physics here, uh, which I love to do. I love to nerd out on this stuff. When you look at the body in a torus field diagram, our heart center emits this electric field that extends like six feet out. Like imagine yourself in this invisible donut. That's how far you're essentially... Um, bioenergetic blueprint can extend from, which is really interesting when you think about why we were told to stay six feet apart a number of years ago. I might be reading into that a little bit too much, but I think there's something to it. And that's also why when you're in close proximity with someone and their vibe is really off and you know your heart starts to 
beat a little bit faster. Or you're just not feeling at peace and ease around like literally being in this person's field. You need to pay attention to that because that can actually be your body receiving their energy, noticing it, and it's not a good match. And there's different things I talk about in the membership to really kind of shield yourself and how to navigate that relationship because we're all going to experience this stuff. This, this, this show here, this episode is all about life and how do we overcome things and how to not take on other people's stuff while still being empathetic and helpful, but really making sure that your oxygen mask is on first. So Sylvia, I warmly encourage you to give yourself a little bit more love do things that are supportive even in the love aspect of your heart. But do mention to your doctor that you're having some fluid retention. That's very important. Uh, Carrie says, hot here in Concord, California too. Only 95 today. Wow, that is really hot. So the heat, oh my gosh, the, the temperature changes. This is another stressor in life is the seasonal adjustments. And what's observed is actually those who experience all four seasons are actually typically more kind of like, robust and tough and resilient, which is interesting. So uh, something to think about. And the heat thing is your body just needs time to adjust. So with life changes, with temperature changes, the body just needs time to adjust. And when I lived in South Florida, you know, it was in the 80s, it was in the 90s, uh, but I was there for six months and my body was able to adjust. And then I had to come back to Canada in the winter time. And, you know, that was another huge adjustment on my system. So with the change of seasons, these temperature changes can be a little bit more gradual. But when you travel, even that's a stressor in and of itself. Going to elevation, you're getting more radiation. Hence why I love to wear my EMF protective clothing. Uh, no Choice and Lambs makes really great EMF protective go clothing when you're on the go. No Choice makes some great bed sheets, a bottom sheet and a top sheet, which I also I love to travel with bedding too. So just caring for yourself a little bit more when an environmental stressor like heat is happening actually, unfortunately here where I live, the forest fire smoke is starting to happen. And that I find really negatively can impact my mood because great, there's an environmental toxin in my air, air quality isn't great. I'm doing all these other things to stay on top of everything and live my best life and take care of myself. But this is an external thing and it's frustrating for me. And you just have to let it go. You have to let it go. You're always going to be exposed to toxins in one way or another, different stressors in your life, but it's how you deal with it. Do you perseverate over the smoke filling the air, the sky looking orange, smelling smoke, or do you find something else to kind of distract yourself and put your head in the sand and maybe bump up your detoxification routine, kick up those air purifiers, maybe get some additional purifiers uh, is helpful. And Sylvia is super excited about lots. Currently project is designing and building out a sprinter van mobile studio. Is so cool. I know you're doing some cool things. Been doing posture alignment exercises. Yes. Keep that spine straight. Your chakras are these energy centers in your body. I love looking at uh, traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda because they've been around for thousands of years. And when you think about where these chakras are, they're actually at our key organ systems and glands in the body. So having good posture, having a straight spine could also potentially help with your vibe and your frequency and your chakra alignment. I love to kind of think about these things. Exploring biohacking, so many exciting things going on. Exploring uh, Cash's genome test. Yep. That's the DNA company. He's buddy. Uh, and talking with, with Rachel, she means me. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. And feeling, uh, the, the hippie, <laughs> the hippie reference. I think it's, you're going to learn when you laugh. And when I was looking at frequencies, you know, going through things in my life too, is kind of feeling those low vibe things. And it's like, you know what? I just got to snap myself out of it and pick myself up and be in the highest frequencies possible. Peace, love, and joy. Those hippies had it right. Uh, the hair can stand up on the back of your neck. I think that was reference to when you're in um, close proximity to somebody else. But also what's interesting about this is that we're basically on a planet. It's a ball flying at, I don't know, thousands, tens of thousands of kilometers an hour or miles an hour. 
and we're going through these pockets in space. Then we have this massive ball of fire out there called the sun that emits solar energies that actually is so powerful enough to disrupt our uh, telecommunications. And all of these things, things impact our bioenergetics. They impact peptide release, hormone production, and neurotransmitters in our brain and the body's electromagnetics. Our body is literally mediated by positive and negative ions. That's why grounding is so key. But also, you know, keeping an eye on things like the Schumann resonance, what's happening in the Earth's ionosphere is really helpful. So if I have a heads up that, okay, we're getting like an X class something solar flare or something's happening um, with the planets, whatever, these are massive bodies that, it, that have their own gravitational fields and poles. So what I actually want to kind of not warn you about, but just be really transparent is the more pure you become, the more empty your toxic bucket is, the more you are living a really good lifestyle 90 to 99% of the time, you're going to notice when something is off. You're going to notice when something just feels a little bit different. You're going to notice better when you need to just take that time to just chill the F out, to have more peace, have more calm in your life. It's not about, you know, being an avoidant detachment style and just hermiting and staying in bed all day, but it's about doing things that bring you calm, whether for me, that's playing my electric guitar or my acoustic guitar, playing pickleball outside, going to the beach, going on a hike, reading a book, being with loved ones. These are all really good things that can actually kind of pick you up if you're in a bit of a funk. But notice when the hairs stand up on the back of your neck. Notice when you're having trouble going to sleep. Uh, actually, when I had that really beautiful dream I mentioned, I, it was kind of one of those nights where I felt like there was just a lot happening around me. And I actually just picked up my Bible that was on my nightstand and slept with it on my heart. <laughs> had the best dream of my life and then woke up and was still holding my, my little Bible that my mom gave me from high school uh, on my heart. I had the best dream ever. Like if that isn't a sleep hack, I, that's kind of like a funny, interesting one. I don't know what is. <laughs> yes, these things really do affect us. And your intuition is alert. Um, don't downplay when your spidey senses are giving you insights that oh, maybe something isn't quite right. Something's a little bit off. Okay, I feel like my body's going through something. I'm just going to ramp up, make, make you sure that you're eating enough, you're not maybe doing intermittent fasting too long, your body's getting jittery, things like that, you're getting a little anxious, maybe ease off on the coffee, cut out the alcohol, be really diligent with your diet, with eliminating vegetable oils, cook more food at home, wild caught salmon, grass fed beef, sardines, eggs, these are really great protein sources. And then just doing things that make you happy. And those are likely going to be like painting or some type of fun hobby that you do, add these things in to just continue to support your mental and emotional needs too. All right. That's a lot. This is a lot in this one. I'm so thankful for uh, some of the questions and just the things that you brought up here live. I think they were worthwhile diving into because in the show here, it's just all about being real. It, we're all humans. We're all going through stuff, but let's just go through stuff together with this beautiful community here with more grace and ease so that when we go through stuff, it doesn't result in accelerated aging because you've been stuck in this perpetuated state of inflammation and um, not having enough nutrients in your body. Pick yourself up, make good choices, and definitely join my tutorials if you haven't yet for the uh, hour and a half biohacking lesson. I'm doing a second one on more of the advanced things as well. All right. Love you all so much. Have a beautiful high vibe rest of your day. Check out the description of this episode for more ways that I can support you. Uh, lots of free things that I do all the time, like these uh, live recordings here. And I love you all so much. Thank you so much for your prayers and your ongoing support and continuing to purchase products through me take the tutorials, book your one-on-one, -on -one, the membership. I wouldn't be here without you. And it's truly my pleasure to support 
uh, myself and also you in helping you both look and feel your best because they go hand in hand. You're not going to look great if you're feeling crummy. You're going to look better when you're feeling really good. They go hand in hand. And when you do things to make yourself look even better with rejuvenation and you're looking after yourself, you're going to have a faster recovery. All right. My absolute pleasure and just a oh just a little tip here uh, for my skin shop and also on the school of radiance to access your tutorials and your membership all you need to do is use the same email and password for both they're two different platforms i don't help with any password recovery there's a forgot password button you can uh, do that but if you have like different emails and passwords for the always radiant skin shop.com and the school of radiance.com to access tutorials and membership just go in your account settings and update and make it the same. Uh, there's also something else you can do. It's called LastPass, and it will save your login details, saving you time here and there. All right, so that's a great little tip, a little troubleshooting. All right, love you all so much. I'll see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.